What does it mean, triangulating marketing measurements? This is a buzzword that we were whole hearing in the marketing measurement world, but it's really complicated to understand what it really means and why we should keep attention to it. So today I want to dive into what it really means, triangulating measurements, and why it can be useful to you in order to scientifically measure and optimize your media. Now, let's start from the beginning. We started in 2012, in which there was the gold era of marketing measurements. It was extremely easy to track each customer's behavior before buying. So Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics, and all the other software were extremely, extremely precise to showing us what campaigns were actually performing and what campaigns were not. Now, this was done because it was possible because there was a lack of privacy regulations around privacy, which stopped and actually started to be something really important in 2018, in which, in a moment in which Cambridge Analytica was the scapegoat that actually demonstrated how evil uh, a company can be tracking and violating privacy of its users. Now, from 2018, the first privacy regulation policy came into the world, focusing specifically in Europe, the GDPR. From this moment on, advertising platforms were alarmed and started researching alternative marketing techniques that allowed marketers to measure marketing performances without relying on users' data. And in 2020, Amazon and Meta released their first marketing mix modeling program. In 2021, a new big change in the marketing measurement world came. iOS 14 was released and Apple users could actually opt out being tracked into their customer journey. And this deprecated Google Analytics and similar software even more. This is why in 20, 2021, there was the first release of a first open source library known as Google Lightweight MMM by Google. And from this moment on, we started to live always more in a privacy-centric world in which we cannot track and scrape and collect user-level data in order to measure our marketing performances, but we need to find and leverage different techniques in order to measure our marketing performances. Now, in the world we are in right now, we're facing a lot of challenges. Now, first one, the more we go on, the more complex our marketing mix is because um, marketers and companies want, don't want to put all the eggs in one, in one basket but they want to diversificate in order to mitigate risk of platform changes, etc. And with new blockers coming to being adopted in the market, with new privacy restrictions, tools like Google Analytics don't allow marketers to understand really what's the true marketing or media ROI for their campaigns. If marketers have a really hard time understanding what campaigns are wasting their budget and what campaigns are actually outperforming and it should have more budget. And overall, there is a really hard uh, challenge into measuring and allocate marketing, bu marketing budget in order to maximize revenue. Now, to solve this, we start talking about triangulation in marketing measurement. We have three pillars. First one, in marketing, triangulating measurements means using three different techniques in order to scientifically measure our marketing performances. We have three pillars. The first one is digital tracking. Digital tracking, as we know, right now is extremely useful specifically for bottom funnel campaigns. We cannot track the users into its customer journey, but we can track the user before it buys from our, before it buys from our brand. And digital tracking is extremely helpful in order to optimize and measure bottom of the funnel campaign. The cool thing about digital tracking is that it's real time. It allows us to understand what bottom of the funnel campaign is actually driving sales for a company and what is not. But it gives up it gives us only a small view of what is really working in our media mix. If we want to have an holistic view, we need to use a tool called marketing mix modeling. Marketing mix modeling is just leveraging statistics in our marketing data in order to understand how historically each factor in our media mix between media, organic factors, and context factors have influenced our sales. Now, the last pillar in our triangulating measurement technique is incrementality testing. And incrementality testing is used mainly to validate the measurements from digital tracking and marketing mix modeling. This is because both digital tracking and marketing mix modeling have their biases. Digital tracking does not measure incremental sales. It only measures where the user was before buying, which doesn't, doesn't mean that that sales was incremental. Marketing mix modeling uses correlation-based insights in order to generate hypothesis of what is the probable, most probable ROI for the certain channel. 
In order to validate both of these measurements, we need to run a real-life experiment. And if you think about it, humans have only one way in order to measure and actually validate hypothesis. is through is being in a lab and running an experiment. And this is what we do. So in this presentation, I want to focus mainly on marketing mix modeling and eye testing, because I assume that everyone knows about digital tracking because we have had it for the past 12 years. Now, marketing mix modeling, as we said, is a set of statistical techniques applied to marketing historical data in order to understand how media, organic factors, and context factors have influenced our sales. By media, I mean offline media, online media, upper funnel, bottom funnel, doesn't matter. All the medias can be measured and we can actually detect the ROI, the confidence interval of the ROIs of each media that we have in our marketing mix. But it doesn't stop there because obviously media is not the only factor that influences our sales. There is seasonality, there is organic factors like email sent or being viral on TikTok, or there are context factors like uh, the discounts that we gave over time, the events that we do, or external factors like COVID or interest rates can and might influence our sales. Everything is taken to account as if it was a mathematical function that inputs all these data inside and it can predict with a certain accuracy and a certain confidence how many sales we're going to do, we're going to generate based on this list of factors that we have inside our function. Now, this marketing mix modeling allows marketer, allow marketer to measure the true marketing effectiveness, measure online and offline media ROI, and obviously predict the impact of a certain decisions that we want to implement. So let's say we want to move a certain volume, 20% of the marketing budgets from Google Video to Facebook, we can predict with a certain confidence of how many sales we're going to generate if we implement the particular strategy. Most of the times we have a lot of uncertainty in each marketing mix model that we create. Now, in order to solve for uncertainty, we need to use and run incrementality tests. Incrementality tests, the most used and the most scientific incrementality test that we can run right now is a geo-based A-B test. Let's say, for example, we run a we want to measure and validate what is the incremental contribution of Google search brand. What we do, let's say we run this campaign countrywide in US, we want to run a deprivation test. We want to stop spending on a list of states or regions in US. And what we do, we stop spending in this list of regions and we continue spending on the rest of the country. We wait for one month, let's say, the, the time required in order to reach statistical significance. And after one month, we measured the overall sales generated in the regions in which you continue spending versus the regions in which we've stopped spending. The difference between these two allows us to measure the incremental contribution of Google search brand campaigns. Through this experiment, we can actually measure an inference causality. And this is what we try to do. We want to run geo-based A-B tests in order to inference causality between investing the money and receiving an output. We want to link that. Now, obviously, I want to show you a practical view of what it looks like when it's implemented. And for this example, I'm going to use Cassandra. I don't ask you to buy it or try it. It's just the fastest incrementality measurement software that I know, which is easiest for me uh, to show it to you. So let's go inside and dive into how it can help you. So we are inside of Cassandra. Let's dive into first marketing mix modeling. And second of all, let's go inside of what it means to run a geo experiment. So. First of all, in here we see how accurate our mathematical function is in predicting how much revenue we're going to generate. In this case, we have a uh, time series that shows us the predicted revenue versus the actual revenue. We have an accuracy of 96%, which is our square for our analysts that are watching. Uh, and the average error on prediction, which is the normalized root mean squared error, which is 6.56. This is just to show you how accurate uh, your function is. But if you scroll down, you start to see the uh, insights that are really, really important for your marketing mix strategy. We can detect what is the incremental ROI of each campaign type, uh, regardless if, the, if they are PRs, campaigns, TV channels, or influencers on TikTok or meta prospecting spend. It doesn't matter. Now, obviously, here there are suggestion boxes that suggest you what to do, uh, and they read all the insights and they prescribe you with a solution and a proposal in order to help you optimize your media mix ROI. I want to focus mainly on to the uncertainty. Each measurement that we do statistically, it will have a certain level of uncertainty because we don't have, we normally see that the ROI of meta ads is three. In any marketing 
macro mix modeling analysis or any statistical modeling procedure, we don't have only one value that actually show us the revenue or the ROI of uh, each campaign type. But we have a list of values that have the 95% probability of being true. Obviously, based on how wide these confidence intervals are about our ROI, the, more, the wider they are, the more uncertainty there is inside of that particular measurement. So, for example, meta prospecting can have an ROI between 8.44 and 10.63. While there is meta retargeting, even though it has a really high ROI, it is the most uncertain. Its ROI can be between 9.49 and 38.58, which is really high. If I only looked at this and we had high volume of investments in meta retargeting, the first thing that I want to do is I want to shorten this confidence interval. So we, I will shorten it running a geo experiment. I'm going to show you how in a little bit. But first, I want to dive into all the insights that you can unlock from any marketing mix modeling project. So we know what is the level of uncertainty of each measurement. We know what's the approximately the ranges of the ROIs of each campaign type, regardless of if they are offline, online, upper final performance, regardless. Everything is inside one function. Scrolling down, obviously, I mentioned that we're not going to only measure the incremental impact of media, but also of discounts, of emails, of search organic, and uh, seasonality and holidays. Everything is included in one function that helps you understand how your media, your discounts, and everything influences each other in order to generate sales for your company. And you can detect what is being historically the incremental contribution percentage-wise of each uh, factor that you have in your media mix and how much revenue have been generated thanks to that particular spend or particular factor. Now, what I want to focus on uh, after I've detected historically uh, what has been the driver for my sales is I want to understand how I should arbitrage over time based on seasonality. Seasonality is a proxy that we can derive from any marketing mix modeling project in order to understand how the demand for our product changes over time. We can use this insight in order to understand how much to increase the marketing budget during high demand season and how much to decrease it during low demand season. For example, during January, which is the highest uh, the period for the highest demand season for this particular brand, we need to increase the marketing budget by 22.52%. While during low demand season, at the end of the year, at uh, the beginning of December, we should decrease it by 18%. In this way, we ensure that we only bid, we only invest the right volume investment without leaving money on the table or without overspending. Obviously, we don't want to do just that. We want to diagnose the past and we want to analyze whether historically we've overspent. And over time, we can see here the ROI over time of each campaign type in our marketing mix. And we can detect the moments in which there have been a lower ROI for each campaign type. So let's select, for example, meta retargeting. Meta retargeting, there are points in which there are, we are really low. In these moments in which we were really low, uh, we can dive into and see uh, what really happened. So in here, we have uh, the distribution of our budget over time. Let's select meta retargeting in this case. So in the moment in which we had, this is 13th of February, this is 13th of February, the lowest ROI, we have it when we increase the marketing budget on meta retargeting. And if here we can see the revenue generated by each campaign type and each factor over time, if we want to select only the contribution that meta retargeting had in our um, in our media mix, we can see that in the moment in which we had positive spice in spend, there was not a linear uh, extensive contribution of that particular uh, factor. So we say that actually uh, reached diminishing returns in this case, and we've overspent during those periods. We should avoid overspending. Let's see actually what the diminishing returns curve of this particular campaign type looks like. Because thanks to MMM, obviously, we can measure these two things. So I want to go to meta retargeting, right? And as you can see, after this volume of investment, after $500 spent every week, uh, this channel saturates and we were spending around here. There is not enough incremental contribution from this volume of investment and this one to justify this increase in budget. Now, we can see the diminishing return curve, so the efficiency curve, in other way, is how much revenue is attributed to meta retargeting based on the volume of investment, but we can also measure the effect over time that this campaign has. For example, in this case, we, we can see the maximum impact of this campaign after two weeks 
from the moment in which you invested the budget. So you invest in week zero, week one. After two weeks, you will see maximum impact. And then the effect, if you stop spending from this moment on, you're going to lag the effect for maximum four weeks. After four weeks, you're going to have zero sales coming from the investment made by. Um, we can drive all these insights and understand whether we are underspending or overspending in each campaign type, or we can actually simulate market investment. So let's say we have uh, this budget allocator, right? So we want to, let's call it test. We want to invest $119,000, 108. Yes. And I want to predict the next four weeks of marketing budget here. I'm going to move this. I click optimize budget. And what it's going to do for us is going to create as a media plan. Hopefully, it's going to help us optimize the marketing ROI. So what we can see here in this prediction, we're going to have invested the same marketing budget. But if we follow these suggestions in light blue, which we will increase the marketing budget in performance max, we will search brand, Google video, and reduce it on meta prospecting, uh, reduce it a little on TV channel one and TV channel two, we will increase our revenue by 1% in the next four weeks. And ROI is going to increase 1.07%. Obviously, this is not the only factor that is going to influence your sales. This is just a prediction of what is going to happen for the revenue that will be generated from media. But also we know exactly that seasonality is going to have an effect and the holidays are going to have an effect. In fact, here we can see that the seasonality is going to be a little positive and is going to have an increase in revenue attributed to itself of 25,000 euros or dollars. Uh, while the holidays are going to affect the revenue negatively, generating 893 euros less than the previous four weeks. In this case, what we do is we set expectation for everybody, try to predict as accurately as accurate as possible what is going to happen if we implement this particular strategy. Obviously, this is not always the case. We want to test and run this experiment and these small changes in marketing budget when we are really confident. And in this case, we're not confident for most part of the media mix, except for meta retargeting. Now, what we want to do from now on is we want to understand how to validate this hypothesis, how to reduce the uncertainty of your model through geo A-B test, geo experiments. And this is how we work. We go inside here in Cassandra and where you can see incrementality experiments. You can click call list. I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like. So Cassandra automatically creates, let's say you input a uh, number of sales and revenue generated by each, uh, each region in your country uh, per each day. And it automatically selects the regions that have the highest probability of running as a sexual experiment. Based on your measurement, is going to suggest you what is going to be the ideal time length that you need to run your experiment. For example, in this case, if we want to measure the incremental contribution of world video, we need to stop spending in these regions in Italy for 10 days. And what we do, we implement the strategy. And after 10 days, we want to see the result. And the results look something like this. We have here the, the revenue generated in the regions in our test group over time. In this moment, we started uh, the experiment, and we saw a negative lift of sales, which is ideal. We stopped spending on that particular campaign type, and we saw a negative contribution in that particular regions. So we saw that we, we have made minus 115 sales compared to what we would, would have generated if we didn't change anything in our marketing mix. From this insight, we can derive what is being the incremental contribution in the regions in which we continue spending. We can derive the real cost per order or cost per con incremental cost per conversion versus the one that has been tracked by Google Ads, for example. And we know the probability of achieving a similar result or an identical result if we repeat this experiment in the future. We always try to be 95% uh, com confident or we have a probability of 95% in order to um, summarize and validate our hypothesis. Obviously, from now on, scroll down, we have an explanation of what it means all that. We have our cost per conversions is different from the CPO measured by the platform. It means that Google Video has attributed to itself 63%, 63 conversions more than reality. The real incremental impact of Google's video is 4.84% and has, has a contribution of negative 115 conversions. Now, what you might do uh, in a modern marketing mix modeling solution is you want to use this insight as a prior in order to calibrate your marketing mix model when you refresh it. So this is how it will look like in Cassandra. You go to your model, click refresh model. You insert your name, the modeling, you insert your data or you connect to it. We have connectors, for example. 
what you want to do is you want to select uh, the new channel or you want to remove the new channel. And after that, you refresh it. And every time you refresh it, you can add a prior, a the result of your experiments in order to calibrate the incremental contribution that your experiments showed you for that particular channel. In this case, it would have been the Google video channel. Now, hopefully I simplified a little uh, of what it, what it means to triangulate measurements. I know that it's not a simple topic, but I try my best to show you uh, the best content in the best way possible in order to help you achieve better results with your marketing measurements. And keep in mind, uh, doing marketing mix modeling once a year, it's not enough. Your data is going to be biased. There are a lot of factors that might influence the level of uncertainty of your MMM and drive bad results if implemented. So try to always refresh your model at a week, at a monthly or a semestral or quarter based. This is really important. The more you refresh it, the more you use in each refresh your, your incrementality test data, the less uncertainty there is going to be. And the more you use and you leverage your budget allocator, the better control you're going to have on the results that your brand is going to generate. Hopefully, uh, this video has been useful. Uh, if you want to try Cassandra, you can do it for free, uh, just clicking here. I will be extremely happy to guide you personally into the onboarding of this uh, platform and uh, I remain available if you have any further questions. Have a great day.